Robotic surrogates combine the durability of machines with the grace and beauty of the human form to make your life safer and better. An idea how a surrogate's head would explode from the inside. What do the operators say? Not much. They're dead. If you're trying to imply a link between VSI products and an operator's accidental death... I'm not implying anything. I just want to know how an operator can be killed by signals from a surrogate. The idea itself is absurd. If it were possible, it would defeat the entire purpose of surrogacy. Surrogates have jumped from bridges, been shot, even blown to bits without the least bit of harm to their operators. What about a human hit? What would cause one of them to blow up? Agent Greer, we're not doctors. Honey, I don't know what you are. Rada, you play three different characters in the movie. What was it difficult? I mean, to have to change your mindset between all these characters. It is kind of an interesting aspect of the character that she's sort of mercurial, and you sort of meet her and get to know her as a robot, and you don't really ever get to really know the person who runs her. So uh, when her motivation shifts within the story, I think it, it was fun for me to play, but it was also something that had to be sort of subtle and disguised so that the story is not. Um, doesn't give its plot points away, right. I guess. But um, my action was really fun to play the real Peters, who, who's the real person uh, behind the surrogate, um, who's got a little fat padded bum and <laughs> buck teeth and funny skin. And at first I was very kind of like, oh, I don't really want to play it that way. I want to just play the sort of vulnerability of humanity. Um, and then I really loved that character and, and being in that costume especially because you could chop and change like that. Okay. There are a lot of physical scenes because the robots are indestructible in certain ways. So did you have to train for that? Did you have to get in shape or did you use a stunt job double? Well, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was interesting for all of us because the ideas were supposed to be this sort of physically perfected version of ourselves. And so when the studio executives told us we all had to bleach our teeth, we were like, <laughs> really? And we did, and it's quite, it is quite painful. So there were, there were, um, physical things that we did to sort of prepare the look um, and some of that entail going to the gym and you know whatever but um, yeah it was an interesting thing to be that focused on, on that kind of detail. Okay. Having done this movie would you be pro surrogate or con? Um, if this were to happen in real life? If this life. were to really happen I, I think what's what's really interesting about the film is it poses the question are, are we abstracting our social interaction to such an extent that we are almost living in a surrogate reality I mean, it, it's sort of futuristic, but it could be, you know, in a couple of years' time with where technology could potentially take us. I don't think it's that appealing, and I think people already sort of question what it means to have 500 friends on Facebook. Um, <laughs> is that really a social life? Um, I think that those are the questions that the movie poses, um, definitely. And how would you describe the, the relationship between your character and Bruce Willis's character? Um, we have a sort of a terse relationship. We're sort of working together um, to solve this case. I mean, someone has figured out a way to kill to kill the operator by killing the surrogate, and this has never happened before. So it's 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 an, a thriller in that sense, and, and it's a strange kind of mystery that we have to unravel together. So we're we're cops that work together in that capacity. Are there any scenes in the movie that you're very fond of? Um, well, there's a scene, there's an action sequence where I get to run on top of cars and buses and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. You didn't have your stunt double do that? No, she didn't do any of it. I did all of it. Um, Jonathan, this isn't your first sci-fi robot movie. You've directed Terminator 3, as mm -hmm. everyone knows. How is this robot movie different? This robot movie, if you want to call it that, is different from any other robot movie that I know of because all the robot movie movies, all the robot movies that I've seen, um, the robots are independent thinking beings. They're, they're what's called in science fiction sentient. In other words, uh, they have their own minds. Uh, this is different. These robots are really just tools. Um, so the robots in this movie don't do anything that the human operator at home doesn't control them to do. If, if, if the robot raises his hand and goes like this, it's because the person at home had the brain impulse to raise the hand and go like that because the person home is experiencing everything vicariously. It, think of it as like sort of a metaphor for being in the internet, you know, and having a presence on the internet. It's just like your presence is actually real, it's in the real world, so mm -hmm. your surrogate can go to your 
workplace because you're controlling it. You can go, you can do your job, you can go shopping, you can do everything you do, except you're at home and it's all being done by a machine. Were you familiar with, I mean, this is based on a graphic novel, so were you familiar with the book before, and did you read it? No, I had never heard of this graphic novel before. It was sent to me. The producers had optioned it and, um, and then sent it to me to inquire if I wanted to get involved in developing it. At the time, it was not a well-known uh, property. Uh, it was uh, known in sort of the small graphic novel okay community because it, it was a terrific uh, piece of material and it gotten some acclaim, but it wasn't known on, on any kind of mass level. And the moment I started reading it, I instantly sparked the idea. The writer had just come up with a, an idea that was incredibly simple, but totally original. Right. And that often is kind of the key to, to what will kickstart a movie. Um, Bruce Willis is a major action star. Was it important for you to cast him because of his box office success, or do you think someone else could have done this role? You know, it's, 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 he was my first choice. Bruce was the guy I wanted for this movie, so I can't even imagine anybody else in this role. Um, and interestingly enough, when the guys had written the graphic novel and had fantasized that someday it could be turned into a movie, the guy they imagined was Bruce Willis. Huh. And that was totally, I only found that out after the fact, after I'd read it and said, gee, I'd like to do this movie and let's get Bruce Willis. So um, Bruce is, I believe, truly one of the great actors of his generation. Uh, and the thing that Bruce brings to it is he's always credible. He's always believable. He's, he's like the everyman, and we can all just instantly kind of transfer our own thoughts to his. And so he was really the kind of the perfect casting for this movie. Had you worked with Bruce before or met I'd him I never before? worked with him. never even met him before this. He was just, just a fan. And so that's one of the great privileges you get in, in the movie business is, you know, when you idolize somebody you know, from afar as just being, you know, a movie fan, and then you actually get to work with them. That, that's just right. a tremendous thrill. And what are you working on next? Uh, vacation. <laughs> as as I've just only been working on this movie, and just going to take some time off and then figure out what's next. Okay.